I seen a big black blob over my sink. I was getting my eyes checked all the time. And uh, it, uh, they told me that if I ever seen any change, I should come in immediately. I called them up and I told them what I seen and they said, come right in. Millions of Americans have low vision and cannot correct their eyesight with regular glasses, contact lenses, medicine, or surgery. Low vision can result from a variety of eye diseases and health conditions. Age-related macular degeneration accounts for almost 45% of all cases. Many people with cataract, glaucoma, or diabetic retinopathy also have low vision. In the past, low vision was defined as vision 2070 or less. The definition now is vision loss not correctable with standard glasses or contact lenses that affects the person's functional abilities. So it's not about a number now, it's about reduced vision that's affecting the quality of life of the individual um, and their functional abilities. Nine or 10 years after, after the military, I developed um, seeing rainbows around lights and couldn't focus on things directly and then found myself walking into doors and tables. And then I went to the VA and the eye doctor told me that I had advanced case of glaucoma and I was on the verge of losing my sight. We first noticed that Erin was having visual problems probably around the age of three. Um, she had gone to an uh, activity for kids in the park and actually one of the college students that was working and reading them books came up to us and said, your daughter keeps coming up to us when all of the other kids aren't and I don't think she can see the pictures in the book. We um, eventually found out that it was the dominant optic nerve atrophy and we just, you know, learned more about it and it was very hard, very hard at first. To get a referral to a specialist in low vision, you should really start with your regular eye care provider. So ask them who they would like to refer you to. Ultimately, you have to get an evaluation because an evaluation is going to sort out what things are going to help you to function better. You're going to, get to have a chance to actually try those devices. Individuals with low vision often do find it necessary or helpful to make a number of modifications in their home. There's a number of ways that appliance dials can be marked with high contrast and or tactual markings so that they can um, operate the microwave and the washing machine and the oven dials more efficiently. One of the things that's extremely important for the low vision individual is to make sure they have appropriate lighting and appropriate can be different for different people. People don't realize that a lot of times if you can remove the glare, it allows the person with a vision impairment to have a lot more contrast. And contrast is normally what's important for a lot of us, depending as to what our visual issue is. We also introduce them to a number of low vision aids, which include um, magnifiers, handheld magnifiers, magnifiers on stands, spectacle mounted magnifiers, um, also telescopes and electronic magnifiers. One thing we really focus on is always looking out for the next greatest thing with technology. I would say we probably started with the closed circuit CCTV. We um, originally got one for her to try out in the classroom when she was in kindergarten. She then was um, started using the, we call it her little CC or mini CC, handheld closed circuit TV video magnifier. And that was again a day of celebration when we found that tool. Uh, it gave her mobility, um, simple things like going to the restaurant and looking at a menu she could do now, looking at price tags in a store. We looked for the smallest print that we could find and it was on a prescription bottle. Very tiny, I mean you could hardly see it and she could read it. There's a lot of different things that can help you, yes, right? Just depends what you need. This here is a talking color identifier, and it can be used to detect colors, um, primarily in your clothing, shoes. I can see certain colors, yellow, orchid, green. It shows up enough to see, and uh, I get mixed up with black and brown. Purple, purple. And I'm a 
person, I like everything to match. So I try to put in my closet, I try to hang everything up on the hanger that all goes together. So when I take it out, like what I'm wearing is all was hanging all together. I am a customer care associate at a call center. On a job, I use Magic, which is a magnification software. I can invert the screens. I can highlight my mouse, my mouse cursor. I can not even use my mouse and navigate through different screens and different programs. It's, it's very great. It works a lot of wonders, <laughs> a lot, a lot of wonders. The right services and devices coupled with a positive outlook can help people affected by vision loss overcome obstacles and maintain their quality of life. It's very, very common for individuals who have just experienced a, a significant loss of vision to be very depressed, and it's a common thing. We know that, that depression is about one-third of people who have experienced a permanent loss of vision. And so the important thing for them is to show them that there are things that can help them to continue to be able to function better, and I think oftentimes they don't know. If a person gives up tasks and gives up more tasks, they can often fall into that depression. They get caught in that depressive cycle where they feel as though, I can't, I won't, I don't know what to do, and I don't do anything. I went through a major depression for about a year. I was just, I didn't go anywhere, I didn't do anything. I resigned from my job of 11 years. I just, at that point, I thought life was over. My counselors had introduced me to the lighthouse. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do is read character by character, basically just go over. At that time, I had learned a lot. I was seeing a lot of different people like myself. The depression went away. Everything started to get better. My independence came back. My confidence came back. It just made me feel good to see that by me being so young and being a mom, it was not as bad as it appeared. It was not the end of the world. The families are very important for the successful rehabilitation of the individual with a vision loss. Family members a lot of times will ask us, well, what can I do? And one of the things I always tell them is find out as much as you can about this particular eye condition so that you can help your family member who's dealing with the eye condition come to the realization that the person who needs to be the expert on it is them. The worst thing you can do is assume that you know what it is. So go and ask questions, and when you ask those questions, be patient with the person. It may very well be they don't want to answer you right then. Also, it's important that the family not do too much for the person with visual impairments, and, and not take the attitude that it's easier for me to just do it myself. And yes, it will be more difficult for the person with low vision to do it initially, and it will be slower. But if the individual is going to learn, they need to practice. Low vision services allow those with low vision to not only maintain independence, but also pursue their goals, hobbies, and passions. You know, they might have been told by their eye care provider, I'm sorry, there's nothing more that we can do for you. And yet there are many, many things that can be done. So there may not be anything more medically or surgically that can be done, but from an, uh, the standpoint of enhancing functional vision, there are many things that we can do. We want to show them the ways that they can continue to remain independent, um, remain in their own homes, be able to maintain their own finances, read the newspaper, and do all those things that are part of uh, everyday life. <laughs> Don't give up on things that you enjoy doing. I really enjoy bridge. And once I, I hold my cards up and see what I have, and they tell me what's on the board, if I have the cards, I can play them. And if I don't have the cards, I can play them. Wednesday night, it's very quiet. Uh, I have a magnifier that I use to help me to do more detailed work on my artwork. I like for my work to, to stand out, to be, you can be able to touch it, to see, and something I love to do, I love to paint. What my vision loss said gave me the courage and strength to continue on painting, to do more painting, because I wanted to say, let the world know that with your vision loss, you can continue on no matter what. You can still do it. 
It is very important for you to seek the information yourself. That's a form of independence, and you don't ever want to give that up. Google, check the internet, try to find counselors, network, research, talk to people. Don't shut down. Whatever you do, don't shut down. Talk as much as you can. Ask questions. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't give up because it's just so much out there that can help you. I mean, what, what are you really going to do? It's, these are things that you can't control. Your vision, you can't control that. But you can't control how you approach living life with your vision loss. And if you approach it well, then you'll find out that you that you live well. And you, when you live well, you you know, great things happen to you. Great things happen for you.